Thanks. So, John, I was going to ask, um, elementary, obviously, you've had a wonderful role. Yeah. Is another wonderful role. I mean, I mean, how do you feel? Obviously, you, you've had a m much major part in, in the last series. I mean, yeah. obviously, which is going to develop as the series. I mean, obviously, I said it's another fantastic role. But how do you feel sort of fitting into that series? It was... Uh it, it, because the character had been spoken about so much, uh, he was set up. It's, it's a glorious thing when a character is set up like that. And so there was uh, this expectation of this monstrous father coming into the place as Jolly uh, as Sherlock's dad. And uh, so, I mean, I, I researched, I had to research what sort of man is this? Where does he come from? What world does he live in? You know, I found out that he lived in this, this other world, which is a real world above government and above everything else, uh, the, the people that run the world. So it was a fascinating role to play. But I only went in for a one-year contract. So uh, at the end of that uh, season, that was the contract that I had. Although they, they, they did leave it deliciously open, and they said, would you be interested in coming back occasionally <laughs> next year? <laughs> because it was kind of, it developed into a really uh, a fascinating character. It was, yes. yeah. So that was, it was good. I enjoyed it very much. And it was good. We, we were filming back in New York, which is, which is my favorite place to film. That's what we did. How does that sort of father-son relationship compare to the relationship in Fringe that you had to have for five seasons? Mm -hmm. Well, very different. Very different. <laughs> yeah, it's very different. Yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, the, the, the Sherlock, Johnny, Johnny Lee Miller's character, he's, he's, he's uh, he, he, as you know, he's, he's a very strange man, and he, he also hates his father, so <laughs> yeah. and it's doubly strange. Um, incredibly intense actor, and uh, trying to... to converse between characters is intensely difficult uh, as it should be uh, and, and they're both very smart men and they're both uh, very determined and intelligent and, and so it's a real conflict and, and as the father tries to make some inroads into, into the father-son relationship you never know if, it's, if he's just manipulating or, or what he's doing so it's always a mystery. And then, then on the other hand you know uh, working with Lucy Liu uh, who's an absolute uh, Absolute delight. You may have heard that from other actors in the past, but what a joy. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful woman. Uh, so, uh, and also got to work with Aidan Quinn, who, who's been a, 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 I'd, I'd admired him forever, you know. So it was, it was terrific fun to, to do that. Too. But yeah, with Johnny Lee Miller, it was, it was tough, but it had to be. It's, it's so intense mm. and uh, so smart. <laughs> well, I don't know if the question's been asked you before, because you do play such intense characters. Yeah. Is it something that you are able to shake off once cut and oh, off yes. the set, or is it no, something no, no. you can...? No, no, I don't, I don't hold on to characters uh, at all, actually. Uh, I can drop out of it, fortunately, uh, or in a flash, um, and go back into it. I, I, some actors do hold on, and that must be awful. I'm just <laughs> Imagine <laughs> living with some of these people that we play. But I mean, I, I, I think I've heard from Johnny Lee Miller that he there's some <laughs> much residual stuff that. Uh, well, it's a different sort of character, yeah. and he's a different sort of actor too. Sure. He, he, he's, a, he's a very intense man, and uh, so some actors do hold on to it. For example, on set, uh, whereas I might mm. drop it immediately, Johnny will hold on to that intensity. And uh, that's not unusual, mm. uh, just depends on what sort of an actor you are, really. So, yes, he does a bit. And he's off now doing uh, train spotting. Yes. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, how exciting. You're a fan of the first one? Yes. <laughs> I, thought it was a, I thought it was a, a you know, big shift in everything that turned my life around and seeing that thing. I thought, my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> and with the original cast and director and writers. Very good. Sorry, I shouldn't be promoting that. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> but why not? I was going to ask you about what, well, admittedly, this is a slightly older film, but I just want to ask you a very quick question. Mm. It, it was released as The Smuggler over here, and it was called The Mule in Australia. Yes, it's The Smuggler here. It was, I thought it was a wonderful film. Yeah. It's, a, I'm just, it's, it's about a guy who gets picked up by the, uh, the customs. Yeah. And Noble is this. I'm sorry, you're, you're this wonderfully <laughs> evil. Yeah, he's a great guy, wasn't of, he? It was, it was a great film. I just want to talk a little bit about that yeah, very please briefly. Do. I just yeah. want to know what that was like to shoot. Well, it was, for me it was wonderful because, uh, because most of my work has, has not been in my Australian accent. It's either been in English mm. or what they call RP or various forms of American or Welsh or whatever. So to get back and play a real Aussie bloke was <laughs> such fun. He was a fantastic character. He was a wonderful character, wasn't he? And, uh, and such a, a goose. I mean, he was... So to play, how was it to play? Well, it was just fun from beginning to end. Because, as I said, uh, 
this, I hadn't done this before, but, but I knew these guys when I was a kid, these rough kind of men, and, uh, and the whole thing, and it's bizarre. So, so you based it on people that you knew when you were growing up then, <laughs> well, loosely? I, well, yeah, of course you do. Oh, yes. I mean, you hear these voices all the time in your head, and uh, these old fellows. And it's, it's called The Smuggler here. Yes, it is. Ah, they changed the, its name from the... Because it was called The Mule, wasn't it, originally? And they I changed did hear it. something about that. So it's, on, it's, it's on DVD. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic it's a film. funny film, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Very great. funny. And uh, so, and I got to work with some uh, some good actors, you know. Oh, we found you and I, weaving I, I, and yeah, I'd never worked cast. with Hugo before, and that was it was good. Georgina Haig was there, who was my colleague from uh, Fringe as well. Course, yes, yeah, yes. It's, it's good fun. Yeah, uh, thank you for telling it's me right. it's this. I really enjoyed it. I wanted to say so. Uh, so are those characters more fun to play then? The sort of bad characters, or <laughs> he wasn't a good character. <laughs> he was a particularly bad character. <laughs> yeah. He was evil. Yeah, they more. Oh yeah, of course they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think when, the, when there's all sorts of elements in the character, it makes it much more interesting. I, 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 I've often said to, to, to my representatives, uh, please don't put me up for sort of two-dimensional straight characters because I really, I'm really bad at them, and I mean it. I, just, I get very self-conscious if I, <laughs> I don't know what to do with them. But when there's de depth and, and complexity in a character, I love it. So that's normally, it's always what I've got cast as, really. You prefer when the script actually paints that three dimensions and you're not one for... Discovering the character and evolving it. It's, it I, think it's, I think it's got to be there. From the, 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 the gem the, of it. From the the the, there has to be there. The, yeah. the potential's there. I mean, all people are multifaceted. Sure. But, but we, we need to have the... You've got to see the room within the, the role as it's written to play those facets. Sure. And uh, if it's not there, you know... I, I sometimes think getting stuck in a procedural must be tough, where you do... You establish the character in the first two episodes and stay with it for forever. <laughs> I think that must be tough. I mean, I think that's probably what appealed to you for Fringe. Oh, when you had, oh God. And you, you kind of knew that there was going to be this ev evolution pretty much throughout the course of the it, When the I run. first read, the, well, it was only a scene of it, actually. Yeah. And I said to, to my wife, I said, God, I love this role. I, I know this man. <laughs> I know him. This is a bit odd. And uh, so there was, there, was, there was no doubt about that. Uh, sorry, what was the question again? I got lost in the thought then. <laughs> oh, this happens to me sometimes. I, I was thinking about the audition for that show because when it, my daughter, was, uh, who was an actress, uh, was in LA and she said, Dad, there's this film coming up with JJ, a show with JJ Abrams, there's a fantastic role for you in it. And so I rang my manager and he said, Oh, no, no, no you're too young for it. No, no, they don't want to, they want to see you. <laughs> and then, uh, so I went away and we actually both went back to Australia for Christmas. And then I get this message saying, Oh, well, they do want you to put down a tape. And so we did it and my daughter read against me. She read Olivia's role, and uh, I just I loved it. And I said to her, I went home more excited than ever. I said, I'll get that role. I just <laughs> I'll get that role. <laughs> I just loved the audition so much, which was very silly. It's a personal story, but it had a happy ending because that's what happened. So good old Sam, my daughter, put me onto it. Is that in the personal video diary, or has that been on a DVD extra? Or no, no, I've never <laughs> told anyone. I don't think so. I don't think so. So she played Olivia. Cool. Yes. So, so building on the question, so would you say you are more have more fun playing more morally grey characters? So with Fringe and Elementary, and even Lord of the Rings, for example, he plays sort of the steward of Gondor, and mm -hmm. you know he's filled with grief, and of course he's not a bad man, but he's you know morally grey. But it, it, look, it's it's much more interesting to play it. I think yeah. as human beings, mm -hmm. when we're watching something, we've got to identify, don't we? Don't we've got to do, you've got to identify with the characters, otherwise they're forgettable. I either like them or dislike yeah. them, or at least have a reaction to them and recognise them as fully fleshed people. And uh, so to, to, to not do that, yeah. it, it feels very uncomfortable for me. Uh, and to play these, there's something I, I think possibly because of, of, of my voice or something about me that I've always been not attracted to, well, attracted to and offered those sorts of roles. And, uh, and even in, uh, in Sleepy Hollow, he's a very, very <laughs> crazily complex guy. I mean, really <laughs> crazily complex character. Playing a sort of distraught, angry seventeen-year-old in a sixty-six-year-old man's body, and so, so, and I would always, I think now, I think from now on, finally, I wouldn't be offered the other stuff. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, so we'll see what comes up next. Talking about Sleepy Hollow, mm -hmm. what attracted you to, to play that role? Well, it was, it, uh, I, as I said, we'd, we'd finished doing Fringe and went went back to Australia for a while, and, and Alice Kurtzman, who's the, executive producer rang me and he said would you would you do this 
this Sleepy Hollow, which I knew was around the place, you know, and it, it just opened. And, uh, and, and he told me what this character was. And I said, that sounds amazing. And so I, I went and joined the company uh, to play the character that he described to me, which was exactly what we played in the first season of it, uh, which was such a, a wonderful season of television. Uh, fascinating stuff. Uh, it, it, it sort of... It sort of shifted a bit after that, um, but I was only, I only agreed to go in for, for, for two years and that's all I did uh, go in for. But uh, it, it was just fascinating to be able to play that, that Sinita character. But I had to research all this, I had to go back and research obviously Sleepy Hollow and all the spook stuff which I didn't understand and uh, I knew the history stuff. I spoke to Tom Meissen and he said that he came into it completely fresh and he didn't actually know anything, but he actually then started learning about the yeah. turn of the century. Yeah. Uh, uh, old uh, Aust uh, American history. Yeah, well, I knew that part of it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, you do that. The amazing thing about acting sometimes is that you learn so much, uh, or, or directing. You, you learn so much, you have to, and so it's... Fa I've learned far more by acting roles than I learned at university <laughs> studies, uh, seriously, or by being... because of the research you need to do. When I was doing Walter Bishop, the research I had to do into, into so many facets, uh, and other characters as well. It's a, it's a wonderful education. <laughs> you do you feel like you've still... Do you, your career, does it feel like it's sort of in two parts? Because obviously you had a long established mm. career in theatre and, you know, in Australia, and then obviously there was... Yeah. You know, you got to people's attention through, obviously, yeah. some of the American work. I mean, is it, totally. is, is it a career in two parts? Would you say that's a fair <laughs> At <career>? least two <laughs> parts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, golly. It feels, like, it feels like several chapters, yeah. I mean, it's really bizarre chapters. Um, I mean, the very fact I'm an actor is like another chapter, you know, where I came from, there's no way you thought you could be an actor. What an extraordinary thing to think of. And I went to law school, and that's what you did, if you could, you know. So, um, and then other chapters. And when I first tried to break into film and television, it was, it was dry. We moved to another, and it was hard, because yes. no one knew me. So that was when I, I started teaching. And I loved teaching, even though I was terrified of it at first. I thought, oh, God, what do you do here? And so I, I, I remember being... Think, I, I don't, and then the confidence went away. I, I, I don't know anything about acting. I don't know anything about it. So I sat down and I just wrote. I just wrote, boom. And I finished up with this document. And I thought, oh, my God, how did I know all that? But it gave me great confidence. And so I used that as the premise. And we still got, my daughter still has that uh, initial 10-page journal or, or whatever it was. So then I fell in love with it. And I still teach whenever I can. Uh, uh, yeah, I love it. I gave a master class in New York about three, three weeks ago at the... NYU, and I'll do it when I can. You've obviously got some uh, fantastic characters which are in uh, properties which have, have very intense fandoms. Yeah, sure. But uh, I saw your eyes light up when Joel brought up something from the past. Is there anything in your kind of the back catalogue of work of yours that you do kind of want to, every once in a while, just say, okay, let's. <laughs> it's fun to focus on the. Uh, the elementary and the sleepy yeah, yeah. hollow, but you know what? Have you seen this little gem that I did? <laughs> no, but I, I do. I do have very, uh, I do have very fond memories of some stage performances, yeah. and which of course are, are lost forever. Sure. And and in the last couple of years, I've actually made a return to stage for the first time with a couple of plays in New York, which was really fascinating. And and uh, so that was kind of having been totally obsessed by it by years, and then leaving it, and then coming back. And you, you feel know, like coming home. It was really wonderful. It was really, and they were both great roles. So, um, what roles were they? Well, I, uh, I first of all was it classical theatre or well, no, or the, the, no, no. The, the, well, I played Henry Gibson in the last one, and uh, the one before was a, a very good play called Substance of Fire, where I played an old Jewish man. Great roles. So it was fun, and, uh, well received too, which was always it's always nice when they are. Would you say theatre has changed since your time, since you retired, or is it still the same old? Same as far as I can say, there was no change. Um, no, well, I, I don't know. Uh, not from what I've seen. It, I don't think it's changed. What, what, what's yeah. going to change, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So I would say no to that. But, I mean, I'm, I'm not yeah. an expert anymore. I, just, I, I go to theatre when I can, yeah. you know. But, uh, mainly in New York, yeah. Which is where I work most of the time. But you also work... Um in animated, with animated yeah. characters, mm -hmm. with voice, what's, mm -hmm. um, what do you like more about that area? I was lucky when I first started, 
as an actor, I caught the tail end, the very end of radio drama days. I caught the very end of radio drama days, and, and so I was able to go in and, and, you know, when they'd have people around banks of microphones and sort of doing all this stuff. So I fell in love with it then. Uh, it's, a, it's a skill you need to learn uh, to, do, to do voice work. And, and I was re reminded the other day of when, a, before then, a fellow who ran an advertising agency said, gee, you've got a good voice. Uh, come in, I wanna, I'm going to use you, you know, big sell. And I went into a studio, and, and I had no idea at all what to do. And I, I stood there frozen and tried to do a radio announcer voice, and it was dreadful. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. So I, 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 I went to some friends and said, what the hell are you doing there? You know, they told me, oh, that's all right. So I learned to do it, and uh, I love it. I love the challenge. But, but I'm an actor that loves doing uh, ADR. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's when we go in and revoice stuff. Most actors hate it. I love it. <laughs> it's just a really interesting challenge. Doing character voice, it's, it's acting still, whatever you're doing. Um, it's different from others because it's, it, it comes in bits and pieces, you know, and uh, we did the big game, Ark of Night, and we, we shot, well, I actually voiced that over a period of two years, you know, and uh, all you've got to do is remember what character you're playing, and they play back a bit of the voice you were using, so. but it's fascinating stuff. I love it, actually, and it's, it's intense as anything. Uh, you, know, you go in there for a six-hour session, at the end of it, you're wiped. I mean, it's too long, frankly, for the voice. Three hours is about the max, but we do it. So what will you working on next? I don't know. I've just finished elementary. I'm just now no, doing I'm a few. Sure. No, I know. No, I, um, I have a little, a, a little bit in a film coming up in July. Yeah, um, but no, there's nothing, nothing yet, except what I'm doing now. It's uh, just a hiatus. I don't know. There's a few things being talked about. I wouldn't mind doing another series. I think I've got one more series left in me before I <laughs> curl up my toes, as they say. Are you getting to see much theatre here in the uh, UK? Because, um, mm. well, Jesse Eisberg is uh, uh, here at uh, Comic Con. Is he? Yeah. yeah, and he's obviously got his play uh, yeah. in the, on the West End. No, no, I won't see him. No, no, we'll, uh, uh, no, we won't. Well, my wife's never been to Prague, so, I, so after here, uh, she can tick that off a bucket list. We'll go, <laughs> <laughs> we'll go there for a couple of days, and then we've got a, a conference at uh, Hanover, and then mm, a few more travels around the world after that. So that's our plan for the next few days. Yeah. You mentioned that you might be interested in playing the Doctor in Doctor Who. Mm. What kind of about that would appeal to you? Well, it's it's you know it's funny it's it's such a legendary thing. It's it's nearly as old as I am, which is pretty rare. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just to step into that genre. It's, it's something you think will never happen in your life. Do you know what I mean? It's just sort of like this pipe dream somewhere out there and I threw that out there not, not that it's going to happen but but it was just sort of was a fun thing to say and I think if they did offer me something or not I'd say yeah why not oh, that's interesting you know calling back to the question we asked earlier because the thing about uh, actors going into the doctor <laughs> you basically create you're creating that character pretty much from scratch yeah. okay. uh, is there any sort of like elements from the, the character that you would like to just kind of focus well no on that? no I mean it, obviously you discuss that with the creators sure and they'll, they'll be developing a story arc, right. which they'll want you to fit into. So it's not exactly just me going in there. And, uh, and, but, but then it becomes this, it, it's when, I find it a very quick process. It, once the, once the, the, the gears start going so fast and ideas come and, uh, and I, I just let things stew around and, and out come the other end comes something. <laughs> and uh, so, I, and then you throw that back at the producers and, and, and they evolve, you know, characters evolve. Walter Bishop in Fringe evolved. Once they saw what I was prepared to do, they started to write more. And as they wrote more, I was able to keep offering them more. So uh, similarly with the other characters I played, they, they watch to see what you're doing and what you're capable of doing. And they try not to write outside of your skill level. So that would be what would happen, I suppose. It's not a bit silly, it's a pipe dream. I'm probably about 4,000 on the list, I suppose, of potential <laughs> Doctor Who. Who knows? But I, I mean, obviously, genre is so huge now. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, this is a good reflection of that. I mean, do you think it will continue to grow? Or, I mean, obviously, it's a hard question. That obviously, no, no. Ball, it's an interesting know. question. You ask yourself the question: Why? Why? What? What is it that? What is it that attracts people to genre? And then you, you create a whole discussion about the the, 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 the social state, the, the state of, the state of us within this with this this world, and why do we escape? Why do we seek escape? Why do, we skip, why do we seek a place where our imaginations can run free? Which is what it is. 
is a very deep and meaningful question. And, it, and, uh, and it's worth talking about. Yeah. And I think it will continue to, if people's lives are uh, as unfulfilled as they seem to be, frankly, in, in the normal run of things, and so unconnected, you know, as we've, we've lost connection with other, other things, culture and church and family, and all those things have gone away. So we, we come here, and a, whole new, and a whole new connection is made. Mm. You know, fandom across the world is, is astonishing, the, the, the friends that are made and yes. so forth. And with technology evolving at the rate it is, it's become, the, it's become something different again. And now, now you've got cosplay and all these things going on, which is quite an amazing. Do you find it sometimes a bit intense, that uh, fandom? I, mean, I, I think I've seen you on the panel at San Diego Comic Con, mm. and you walk out into that room and it is just a wave, Five you, thousand can almost, people. you can almost see uh, the, yourself on stage just getting hit by it. Yeah. It's kind of well they were pretty amazing when, you, when you're working in the big auditoriums with 5,000 people. Uh, most of the, look, it's not like going to a political rally. We're, the people that we go and see are generally supporters. So there is that positive wave of energy. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a love fest usually, which both ways, yes. you know. So, uh, uh, so the intensity doesn't put you off? <laughs> well, it, no, it doesn't, doesn't put me off, but I think other people could be. Um, it, it doesn't perturb me. But I don't, uh, You're not one for rabbit in the headlines? No, <laughs> no, I'm not. And, I, and I, I, I've done public speaking and I've taught public speaking, so I actually understand how, to, how, how those things work. Uh, I'm probably more comfortable talking to a crowd of people like that than I am talking in a personal group, to be honest with you. Seriously. I, I'm, I'm inclined. See, this is comfortable because I know what we're here for. But in a dinner party, I'm inclined to get a bit, I don't know what to say, <laughs> I get a bit tongue-tied, I want to go home. <laughs>